One of the most frustrating, stressful, and nerve-wracking moments being a truck driver is when you're stranded on the shoulder of an interstate due to a blown tire and traffic doesn't seem to want to move over the one lane for safety. I'm watching traffic as if I could do anything but watch. As they narrowly miss my reflective cones or reflective triangles. And what really irritates me is the fact that people will go from the left lane to the right lane instead of vice versa. So I've turned on my uh, the wig wog, that's what they're called, strobe lights on the uh, trailer and my overhead lights as well so I got my four ways flashing I got the strobes going I got the reflective triangles out and the sad and frustrating part is I think I was within 10 miles Yeah, I'm like within 10 miles of where I was going to call it a day, park it up at the uh, Petro in Louisiana off of Interstate 12, so that way in the morning when it's time to go swing through the, there's the Blue Beacon, we could get our truck washed there, and uh, Head on down the interstate. Head to Texas. So, blown tires even happens to the best of us. Y'all be good. Be safe out there. Have a good weekend. Alright everybody, it's been a long, long day. It is um, going on 2 p.m. I just got to the Petro, uh, at, uh, 10 miles away from where I blew the tire. So, tire blown about 10.15 a.m. He arrived at 1 o'clock p.m. and was done by 1.26. So it really didn't take him that long. It was pretty, well, it was pretty fast actually. Um, I just had to, because the, the trailer sits so low, uh, the only issue he had, he had was I had to drive up on the blocks to get it high enough so he could get his, his jack up under there and raise it up. Um, it does not take a professional very long to pop on a tire. And, uh, and get it done and get you down the road so uh, I had to drive in violation by the time he got all said and done he literally arrived and I had like two minutes left on my clock uh, the entire time I'm on um, the side of the road waiting for roadside you guys show you're on duty because you're on the roadside um, get your caution or your reflective triangles out I threw on the four ways and the, the wigwags and the flasher lights and everything 
and um, so that just killed my whole clock um, but first thing I'm gonna have to do with logs in the morning which tomorrow will be Sunday and again I could roll out <clears throat> after my 10 hour break at midnight again which I don't know I'll be doing that I'm pretty tired um, it's roughly 11 hour drive to Edinburgh tomorrow and tomorrow's only Sunday they're not gonna be open until Monday anyway so um, I don't know exactly how early I'm gonna leave but probably not at midnight um, you have to send in a specific macro code I believe it's 35 to explain why you in a violation so DOT understands your situation I put down I was on duty the whole time for roadside repair so then I put in the notation of why I drove the 10 miles to the nearest safe haven which is the truck stop um, once repairs roadside repairs were completed so that is some of the very some of the very few exempts you get to use to drive in violation to the nearest safe haven because of that situation because you can't stay on the side of the road stay on the side of the interstate um, for your 10 hour break once he's you're repaired and um, literally the next truck stop available is 10 miles away and that's <laughs> Ironically exactly where I was planning on getting to but until Trucking happens, right? But when you least expect it bop. Um, That's that's the way it is um, Petro has a, a restaurant. I'm gonna see if they're open. I don't know. I haven't been here since the vid happened so see if they'll let me in to Sit down and eat. That's what I wanted to go do. I'm hungry I'm tired. I'm gonna idle because <laughs> it's hot. It's muggy. There's mosquitoes that love me and I don't love them back. So, um, y'all be good, be safe. I'm gonna go eat and pass out. Talk with you later. Well, good evening or good morning. It is uh, just after midnight, so I had got up about 10 30 and I knew I had a light to repair when the tire blew out that I had uh, to go and replace it. Um, normally you won't have these issues on majority of the lights on the trucks at the truck stop. Uh, they're very generic. Um, you could have the very cheap bulb light and then you can have the fancy LED lights. Well. The LRGN trailers that we have, or the boat division, they are Canadian boats, boat trailers. So apparently they got slightly different wiring plugs and connectors. I'll show you. All right, it's like a perfect triangle. The other ones I don't have to, to show the difference, but um, how this is a perfect triangle, the other one would be like two in a, in a line and then one kind of like, almost like an L, all right? Frustrating, because I just went back there, pulled the old one out, and before I went to the truck stop, bought a new one, brought it out, and then pull this one out to then plug in the new one. You know, if everything goes right, the most difficult part is literally pulling in and out of the uh, the rubber uh, boot that's around the, the light, the rubber grommet, in and out of the trailer. Sometimes they're very tight uh, and it can be a, a real pain. Um, one trick that I use in the past is get uh, because I wash my dishes um, Dawn dish soap a little dish liquid dish soap and some water make it you know lube up and put that uh, rubber grommet in um, 
So I was going to do all that. Save uh, roadside service money, time, and air, and just handle it yourself, right? Well, Canada just bit me in the ass. Again! So, of course, I called up road repair and send in the Macro 31 for repair to let them know what's going on. They want to know everything, like truck, trailer, loaded, emergency, your location, description of what's going on, the exact address, I mean, everything. Um, to narrow down where they're going to send help from. And of course, they, they want me to do the work, like I just said, oh, go to the truck stop, you'll find this or that, you know, it, should, it shouldn't cost that much or it shouldn't be that, that difficult. I already did that. So I called them up, I told them what's going on, and they're like, huh, that's weird. I go, it's an LRGN from the boat division. Oh. I can already hear the disappointment <laughs> in their their voice and like, oh. Alright, hold on. So then they communicate with whoever they're communicating with. Basically, I already checked the Petro here. They didn't have it. I went across the street to the pilot. They don't have anything. There's nothing available around here. There's nothing that's going to be open. Hell, there's a dealership that will be open on Monday. I'm not staying until Monday for a brake light on a trailer. Um, they told me, well, it looks like I'll have to wait until the sunlight and they'll they'll get back with me basically night dispatch don't know how to help me out so maybe in the morning so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm already kind of hungry there's a waffle house across the street i'm gonna head back over there it is hot humid um well it's humid and steamy it, it says it's 77 degrees it feels more like 85 degrees and sticky and humid already and I don't really like it. It's hard to sleep so without the air conditioner on. So I'm idling. My idle time is gonna go way up now that sleeping during the day, driving at night, it's all different now. Um, normally try to get yourself in a situation when you're driving through the day, sleeping at night. Um, if it is cooler outside, you could, you know, sleep with the engine off and just open the window. But down here in the south, uh, the mosquitoes uh, love me, and uh, I don't love them back, so they bite me, and they suck. Get it? <laughs> All right, John with Green Happy Rolling. I'm going to grab some uh, breakfast and go back to bed, I guess. We'll talk with you guys later. All right, so this is a quick little video, a little, little venting of frustration. It is um, 9, 9 a.m. now. Uh, I got up about 7.30 and was asking, like, what's the plan? Um, told me to, uh, uh, you'll let me know where to go for a shop that would be open or whatever along the route. So I needed permission to leave because if you start your pre-trip, think about it. It's not fixed. It's not DOT approved. So I needed them to give me that that like go ahead, but they didn't. They wanted to argue with me and say, "Hey, um, any truck stop can, you know, carries those lights." No, they don't. So then. They said, well, in a message, basically you're going to have to buy the wiring harnesses and replace them yourself. If that was the case, you could have just told me that last night. But that's not what you told me last night. You were trying to find a shop or told me that one, first off, uh, any, any truck stop should carry these lights. Well, then I explained to them the reason why not any will be able to do that so then they're like oh well we'll find a shop along the way so I made a little video I bought 
I went into the Petro. I'm clearing all the messages they sent me. Um, cleared all, or I went to the shop and bought um, some more uh, wire connectors. Um, I have my own wiring stripper and tool. Uh, get yourself a really good one. Um, don't use the ones at the truck stop. I had to do that one time, and yeah, they're just crap. Um, they're very cheaply made, and the wire, the wire connectors, the butt-in connectors, um, they're so hard. It's like when you crimp down really tight on them. Make sure you have a good crimper, because the one I bought at the truck stop that one time, I crimped down and it literally almost broke the crimper itself. Instead of the crimping the wire connector. That's how hard that plastic was. I was I was a bit furious on that end. Um, so, bought wire connectors, bought the plug, the new plug, and the new tail light. Um, used my test light, again, get one, to find out, okay, <laughs> they're not labeled. You got, on the, on the, new, the new wiring harness, you have a red, a black, and a white. Well, the white is ground. The, on the wiring to the on the trailer, you had like a brown, a green, and I already forgot the other color. But um, they don't they don't match. So um, use test light. I found a green was ground. That's kind of like a um, international or or well known wiring from the you know professional electricians use uh, green for ground. Uh, so on the wiring harness that I bought, they used the white for ground, and the reason I knew that was um, on the end of the white white wire had a uh, oh what do they call it? It's a ring. It's already pressed onto the end of the wire. It's a little ring. You you would clip it over a ground uh, bolt or screw or something. So I knew that that was ground. So I snipped that off, stripped it, and butted those together grounds done now I grab my test light to find out which hot leg would be uh, the, the flash for the for the power found that wired it together boom so I'm just a little frustrated because I would be like I said it's 9 a.m. I'd be nearly there I'd be like within three hours depending on how me times I stopped to uh, stretch my legs or whatever. So now starting off late, I'm gonna end up getting there late. Trucking. Sometimes um, communication is key. So next time I now know they're not gonna tell me uh, go to a specific truck shop if. I know that there's a specific truck shop in Missouri near Lebanon. It's like by Springford. Uh, and then there's uh, Par Far Texas has the uh, utility trailer shop. I'll be taking this there, this trailer there immediately after I get unloaded to let them just fix the wood, get rid of the spare tire and um, any other wiring issues. But uh, yeah. I need my coffee. That's another thing. Time to go get my coffee. Uh, I've done my pre-trip. Everything's good and go. So, yeah. Coffee, restroom, and we're hitting the road. Head to Texas. All right, one more little detail I forgot to mention. Um, yes, you get EFS checks. So if you don't have the money and you don't want to buy, pay for it all by yourself or you want a reimbursement, go into the shop, get everything you need, get a grand total, and have an EFS check made out. And they'll, uh, the breakdown will send that to you. All right. Well, it's been a long day. 
started off frustrating after a long frustrating night dealing with the brake light um, just to get the word that uh, basically I'm gonna have to fix it myself and go ahead and just cut the wires and rewire the, the light with the new uh, plugs if they would have given me that information last night I would have got up about say even one or two in the morning and then taken off because I would have fixed the light and be gone but uh, didn't work out that way so we left late after fixing the light and um, didn't get the truck wash and I even thought about getting the truck wash even though we were leaving late but the line was uh, actually building up and it would have been pointless because like 20 minutes down the road it started raining and it rained pretty much until I got south of uh, Houston and almost to Corpus Christi on uh, Highway 59 in between uh, Houston and Corpus Christi on 59 before I got to 77 but uh, I'm an hour and a half away from where I deliver in the morning gonna leave out of here about 7 a.m. as long as there's no line or anything at this place it's a pretty small place I don't know how I'm gonna get offloaded I don't know if it's uh, back in it's pretty small so I just it's gonna be weird it's gonna be a, a unique situation um, hopefully the disassemble of the LRGN is gonna be fine and reconnect is gonna be fine that's the only problem I fear uh, to offload you know change the miners is no big deal um, and we're like seven miles away from the boat division but I am definitely going to have to take this trailer back up to uh, utility drop it off before I go to the boat yard and grab boats um, I'm gonna put in a request to go west again uh, my fleet manager already knows but uh, just a, a friendly reminder, it's been a few months <laughs> since I've been that way. And I got uh, some, uh, well, IRS paperwork to finish up before uh, the 14th. So, <laughs> fingers crossed, I can get going that way. Because uh, I know my paperwork's in a storage unit. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, with that being said... Uh, Stayed positive, even though dealt with a frustrating morning, frustrating situation. I'm still going to be able to deliver first, nearly first thing in the morning. Um, again, sometimes I don't like being right. If I can't be parked up there, which would have been great, um, I'd like to be there shortly after the morning rush traffic so even though far is not a major big city like Houston or Dallas area it still is a busy city where uh, a lot of traffic coming and going from Mexico and if you've been watching the news there's crazy shit going on um, so more saw more traffic lately in Texas and um, coming and going a lot of border patrol sheriffs state troopers and even staged up in uh, one of the towns I passed through was uh, Army National Guard had their their own lot I'm pretty sure it's like a normal facility but it was Pretty packed full of uh, e uh, equipment and uh, vehicles so that could be just a normal thing or that could be where they're prepping for something I don't know but anyway um, gonna have to deliver get this fingers crossed everything goes just right drop this trailer off at utility and uh, hopefully I get something going west hopefully they'll be good to me I need to go west. Um, 
I like to have a day off or two. <laughs> Hang out with my friend. Uh, throw a few back. But anyway, microwave's done. My meatloaf's done. So, uh, John Green, I'll be rolling. I'll talk with you guys later. See you in the morning.